more than that while I was there, right? Digital programs, all subscription. If there was one thing that I learned from selling courses, it was you better have a annual rebuild on that, an annual subscription somehow. Because when I blasted mindvalley.com, and let me tell you, the next year, when those rebills hit, those fucking came through hard. They're like 60% rebilling. So if I do $4 million in revenue in a month, I'm looking at over $2 million of profit come in that month. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. We've got a very special guest today. So really quickly, this is crazy. When I first started this, there was a list of 10 dream guests, right? This is like two or three years down the line. Peter Kell was on that list and we got him in today. He's a very special guest. I'm so pumped. He is the, the VSL GOAT right now, video sales letter. He made $40 million in 12 months with VSLs a few years ago. He's a VSL director at Mind Valley, who are absolutely crushing it. He's a founder of VSL AI the VSL masterclass. Uh, this guy just prints money online with VSLs. He's absolutely crushing it right now. He's going to teach us a ton. So Peter, welcome to the podcast, man. Uh, it's great to have you on. Thank you, bro. I'm so stoked to be here. This is so exciting. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Well, I'm keen to go deep into everything VSL, everything AI, but I guess uh, it'd be great to give people context at the start. So maybe Let's rewind the clock and maybe tell people, you know, a little bit about your story, how you stumbled upon VSLs and kind of, you know, what they've done for you the last three years and everything you've been doing and kind of what you're doing now. So I know you have a crazy story. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's just like your typical young guys trying to get super rich story, that kind of whole yeah. thing, right? I just didn't want, like, I didn't even want to be rich. I was just stranded in my parents' basement for a few years, like two years. And then I was just desperately had to get out of the basement. And then um, I just lost a couple of years to like just failing pretty hard. And I had a big sacrifice in my early 20s. And I just I just felt like, man, if I could get like, like what would make this sacrifice worth it? Oh, if I'd be like, if I found a way to get super rich on the internet and ha by the, my late 20s, that would be totally worth it. I would make that trade all day long. So I went on this like long mission, started a bunch of businesses, failed seven businesses in a row eventually met the mentors who let me sleep on their couch and taught me the secrets of the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom. And they taught me how to do high volume advertising as an affiliate marketer. Unlike most agencies out there or any most situations, we were spending our own money. We were selling other people's products as an affiliate. And uh, I just started learning how to do high volume stuff. I started out as advertorials. Then one day we figured out that if we just put our advertorial into a slideshow format, it would just work better. Right? So I had like one monster campaign, actually one of the biggest campaigns as an affiliate and doing one of my first VSLs. And I just became a VSL junkie ever since. It was just, it was very clear to me that to print money on the internet, right? Like the creative was all I needed to know how to do at the end of the day, right? So that was just basically, and then I just committed my life to making these little videos, right? Because that's the only thing I had to do. That's the only thing any of us really have to do. Maybe not the only thing. There's actually... There's two things we have to do. It's make a VSL and make a VSL for a business that has a lot of enterprise value so you can take a huge exit. Those are the two most important things. Nice, man. And and I guess over the last few years, maybe kind of go through. So obviously you had the affiliate side, there was some some Mind Valley stuff. Now you've got your own, you know, VSL kind of masterclass. So, so tell us around, you know, your current or, or your recent kind of, you know, hustles and businesses that done VSLs with. Yeah, so I just am a huge fan of growing and I'm a fan of mastery. I'm in this game for the same reason that a college kid gets his doctor's degree, right? I'm just getting a degree. But for me, a degree means you have like a jet, right? And you you just, you, you nine figure exit in this world. That's what like being a master of business really is. So, I mean, naturally as an affiliate, I started selling all sorts of different products. Every e-com product under the sun I can get my hands on. Eventually we got a, we had a big affiliate campaign with skincare. So we turned that into a skincare brand. I met a partner who unlocked this next. A lot of my story really comes to meeting a mentor that's a business partner. In fact, over and over and over again, my story resets when I meet a mentor who's also a business partner. So I'm convinced it's the best thing anyone could ever ask for in life is like a mentor who's a business partner. Somebody who's 10 years ahead of you, but wants to do a business deal with you. Best situation you could ever be. In. Interesting. So okay. I met my mentors. They gave me the keys to high volume ads as an affiliate. Crack that. Then I met another guy who had sold a huge company and he knew about e-commerce and all the backend stuff. I partnered with him. That was the skincare brand. Blew that up, was able to sell it using VSLs. 
And then I met Vision, who owns Mind Valley, and was able to partner with them and then um, blow up Mind Valley. It was kind of a grind to do that. And then uh, now I pivoted to launch a coaching program because one of our ads became like number one ads, one of the number one ads in the world. And then I read that quote the master's not the one who's the best in the world, the master's the one who creates the most masters. So I was like, damn, I got to like start like, like teaching people or whatever, right? I got to like start helping people out. And luckily it wasn't too hard. I just started taking phone calls and then everybody was asking the same questions. So I just put together the VSL masterclass, which is my kind of flagship program. And then, um, I mean, I'll tell you, and I put this program together and then I started doing group coaching and it was, it was amazing. It was hugely successful. We had like Tony Robbins team in there, acquisition.com's team in there, Dean Graziosi, Cole Gordon, a lot of big players, like literally some of my students last weekend, there were guys, there was a guy that did $1.6 million two days ago on Cyber Monday, right? These are the kind of people in this community of like the, the business elite coaching programs that we have. It's super badass high level guys. But it started out as $25,000, which is very expensive to most people. So eventually we dropped it to like three grand a month to get a lot of the lower guys in. And I discovered that a lot of the lower people were really struggling to make VSLs. It was very hard, long time up to speed. You know, you got to learn copywriting. It's kind of expensive. There was a huge barrier to entry for these people. So when AI came out, we just figured, hey, I wonder if uh, AI could help people like do it better, right? We started with ChatGPT, realized that ChatGPT shit just sounds just like ChatGPT shit. And we just kind of gave up on it and thought there was nothing there. And then eventually, you know, we just had some little breakthroughs at a time and started to discover like a way of prompting that allowed us to really do copywriting in a very advanced way. Because my secret, my secret is so stupid. It's like the same secret that you would do in high school if you didn't have the answers to a test and you had to pass the test, right? Yeah. It's like, find the, find the successful person and model this right? That's like, it's the same strategy. So I was like, I wonder if AI could do that. So we built VSL.AI to make it really easy because we learned some amazing prompt strategies, but they were all like seven, eight page long prompts that are just a fucking huge pain in the ass if anyone ever wants to use it. So we made a, we made a machine to do this. And I uploaded like 20 of the best VSLs that all did over eight figures in sales to like, and built this tool to like rewrite them for you instantly. And then all sorts of cool things inside of there. And uh, that became VSL.AI, which is an awesome little uh, awesome project. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it is. I'm a member of both. So the masterclass and the VSL AI, and it's like next level. The people in there, the the, the AI itself, all incredible, groundbreaking. Um, and it's yeah, changed everything w we're doing completely. So I want to step back, dope. I guess. Yeah, it's super dope. Super but I just got to say, that's not it for me, right? Because I'm not like a coach, really. I'm more of like a hardcore banging entrepreneur. So the VSL.AI, even though it is my love. And even though it is my passion, what is more my passion is leveling up and exploding at the end of the day. VSLs were able to get me all the way to some pretty crazy levels. But we continue to evolve and we continue to level up and continue to, because I see these guys doing a million dollars a day. These guys, like, okay, you have the high score for now, bro. But uh, my job is to lead the way and not just be like a teacher, but like a leader do by action. So we're grinding and going for $100 million years and billion dollar exits over here. So we're Love it, we'll man. We're making moves. Sick. Yeah, it's, Sick. it's cool. top secret, but for now All it's right. top secret. All but right, cool. Yeah, we're in. We're in. I met it. Guess what? I met another business partner who happens to be a mentor, and opened up some doors I didn't even think were possible. So we're doing weird shit over here now. Love it, man. Well, once you release it, I'm keen to hear it. That's the now, tease. Let's done. All right, done, done, done. Coming soon. So let's step back a little bit. What is a, a VSL? So our audience is mainly people who have you know, info products or, or are wanting to launch info products, maybe some high ticket coaching programs in there. Basically, you know, explain kind of what a VSL is, how it kind of works and you know, uh, why they're so effective in, in terms of selling these kinds of products. Yeah, so a VSL is a video that inspires somebody to solve their problem today. That's it. If you have a business, you have to make a video about your business, right? You have to make a video that tells people to fucking buy your shit at the end of the day. And uh, there's an art to that, right? There is really an art to that. There's an art to cracking it. And with advertising, direct response advertising, you know, if you put $100 down on a video and that video sells people on Facebook pretty well or TikTok or Snapchat or Google or YouTube and you get $300 back, you have an ATM machine, right? So it, like the, the VSL is an ATM machine at the end of the day. But I want to stress that um, because there's everybody loves the VSL talk, but I have to stress that what's 
just as important, or if not more important than VSLs, is what you're blowing up and what kind of value what you're blowing up gets to you. Because we all have the same mission when you're starting out. We all have to do the same thing. We have to fucking make a nuclear ad campaign that explodes, that's crazy profitable, prints a ton of money, and just blows our shit up, right? But if you're an affiliate, you just blew up nothing, right? You blew up, you don't get a list of people, you got nothing. If you're a drop shipper, you blew up a bunch of bullshit, nobody likes you. If you're an agency owner, you blew up something that has a 1x revenue. So you didn't really have much. Now, just to stress this, if you blow up the wrong thing, you have to start over again, eventually. Because eventually your campaign dies, and eventually you're left with where you are, right? And if you didn't achieve your goals through that blow up, then you got to start over, which is my career has been over and over and over again, right? Trying to blow something up bigger and bigger and bigger, which is why I'm in AI now. Because if I blow up a software, there's a much higher multiple of that, right? If you do $40 million as an affiliate, as an agency, as an e-com owner, as an AI company, the AI company has a 20x multiple on revenue. So what we always have to do is blow our fucking shit up. But what I tell, teach a lot of people now is like, yo, let's talk about your exit plan, your vision plan, what it makes you get, because that's really important because you don't want to end up somebody. I have a friend who just called me. He's like, man, I really want to do some mindset coaching with you because I just sold my third brand this year, but I'm stressed out with the fucking yin yang. I got 300 employees. Shit's insane. And I'm like, bro, you can't stop. And he's like, yeah, I can technically stop. I'm super successful. And I'm like, why don't you stop? He's like, well, I haven't achieved my goals yet. I'm like, that's why you can't fucking stop. You're building all these brands, you're blowing shit up, but you're doing it on things that'll never achieve your goals. You know, just do, you got to be clear at end in mind, what are your goals? And we got to make sure what you blow up can do that. I had another call with another guy. This guy is like just fucking super genius crackhead, right? At the same time, just going <laughs> all sorts of shit he's got going yeah. on. He's like, Oh yeah, this product's yeah, going viral. That kind. product's going viral. He's fucking kind. all over yeah, the place. Yeah, yeah, totally. But he yeah. happens he happens to have this gangster ass prescription doctor. It's like it's like a hymns. It's like hymns. Uh, it's like a hymns competitor or whatever. Oh wow! Right, very fucking gangster ass high multiple business. But he's off doing some other fucking shiny object syndrome. Mm. And I'm like, bro, what? Like, he just he's just doing it because he likes it and he thinks it's fun. I'm like, dude. Just do like five VSLs for five different products for your fucking hips competitor. Like, just go deep on one thing, bro. He's like, he's totally done even thinking about his end plan and just going all over the place. Which is crazy. Anyway, I got a lot of these stories. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, it's good. I'm going to get them out of you. So if someone, like, you bring up a great point where a lot of these info products, mainly because of VSLs aren't good, but some of them have kind of life cycles. So if someone wants to create like a digital business, right? with courses, with a coaching program or a mastermind or a membership, something kind of digital, looking at it through that lens of like enterprise value or kind of, you know, long-term like profit and cash flow and building something epic. You're obviously doing it with VSL Masterclass right now. So before, you know, people start on VSLs or, or film anything, how would you approach the kind of your, the, the info product game in, in terms of that kind of like long-term enterprise value, like a, a successful kind of business as opposed to just, you know, a course? So there, so I don't want to hate on anybody who's just trying to print money because we're in different, everyone's in different stages at some point. I just like to bring to awareness the opportunities and the different things that could happen. So I sold a shitload of courses of mine, Valley, right? Over goddamn like 50 million bucks worth of courses. More than that while I was there, right? Digital programs, all subscription, right? And if there was one thing that I learned from selling courses, it was you better have a fucking annual rebuild on that, an annual subscription somehow. Because when I blasted mindvalley.com, <laughs> let me tell you, the next year, when those rebuilds hit, those fucking came through hard. They're like 60% rebuilding. So if I do $4 million in revenue in a month, I'm looking at over $2 million of profit come in that month. I'm like, oh my God, right? This is insane. So like big lessons there are try to find a way to have subscription packages, right? Try to find a way to... That would like try to find a way to build something else at high as high level. So I can't technically sell. I don't like sell my VSL masterclass. I don't sell any courses. I have courses, but I don't sell them. I give them away for free when you buy VSL.ai. Because if I sell courses, then I have a course company and I have no valuation. But if I sell AI, I have an AI valuation, right? Huge difference. I can't have more than 20% of my revenue be courses or coaching or any of that stuff. Has to be AI. So like there's different ways to angle the business for enterprise value maxim maximization, which is important because you just have to start over if you fuck it up. 
Or right, you print a bunch of money, that's pretty good. You get a lot of customers, but then you have to start over. I've just started over so many times. I'm like, I'm like, let's fucking final, final Barry Bonds home run swing this shit right now. You know, let's that's it. Let's go ultra yeah. instinct mode. Like, let's just boom. Sick. Yeah. And you bring up an interesting point there because you mentioned that you know originally the master class was like you know twenty five thousand dollars. I think Mind Valley's annual subscription is around three hundred dollars, and obviously Five, yeah. VSL AI is a little bit, you know, cheaper than that per month. I'm curious how you think around, you know, pricing either you know online courses or, or digital products or, or coaching programs subscriptions. Like, in terms of price points and, and offer and value, how do you think about that? How, how should people approach you know uh, pricing and, and kind of business model setup? Yeah. So step one copy the rich people, you know, that's step one. So ClickBank really figured out the digital product thing a while ago. Digital products have been out for a long time on ClickBank. The funnels have been out for a long time on ClickBank. You want to go around and look at case studies on pricing plans on that. If you have a mass market product, like a fitness thing or like a weight loss thing or something mass market that's probably been taught or ran before, like a back pain offer, you know, those digital ebook back pain things are pretty big. Um, Ebook stuff has been around for a long time. One of the benefits of info products is that you have a lot less FTC regulations because of like what you can say, freedom of speech kind of shit, right? You also have a lot less Facebook compliance regulations. So you can get away with a lot. Like I got into Mind Valley and I was like, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't, all of that was wrong. They could do all sorts of shit, right? That I couldn't do with my skincare brand, which I was like, this is weird. And like just lessons to unlearn, you know, all these different things. So remind me of the question again. I just lost that. We lost my track. No, all good, all, all yeah. good. So if someone's thinking of launching, you know, either a, a coaching business or a course business and they already have one, right? You mentioned, you know, the the yearly rebill bill or monthly subscription, obviously with VSL Masterclass, you're doing a high ticket. So how do you think about picking a, a price point or a business model that's going to set you up for the long term or like a nice exit? Like, have you tested different ones? How, how should people think about it? Yeah. Right. So if you want to get set up for the exit, you have to think about software because I don't think there's, I don't think there's exit value in courses or anything like that. Or I don't really think much of that. I mean, mind value has high exit value, but there's not really much. Step one would be finding a role model who's currently like sign up to adspy.com, sign up to VidTow, which is like 20 bucks a month and start looking at big campaigns that are running and find some role models, right? You got to find role models. If you are not making $1,000 a day online, I forbid you from coming up with any ideas on your own. Forbidden. You are not allowed to do it. None of your ideas have worked. None of them have ever worked. Just admit to yourself that you're not ready for the test. You didn't study. No matter how much you studied, your grades determine if you studied or not. Just model winning people until you start to build it on your own and crack some things. Because I don't want to get you too much thinking about software or any of those things. Just get the foundational skill sets at the beginning you're not trying to make money you're trying to earn skills and your ability to make money is your skills right so th that's how good you actually are at making money you know just to some just to drive this point home i had read all the books in the world on facebook ads seven years ago i thought i was a genius at facebook ads and then somebody asked me oh you're really good at facebook i was like yeah man i fucking know everything about this tool he's like how much money do you make yesterday on facebook none guess you don't know shit about Facebook then, do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's like, just you got to just own it. And I, it was a slap in the face, but it was that was the truth mm -hmm. that I needed. I need to start measuring my how good I am based on the numbers. Yeah. That's one thing I learned heaps after going through your program, where it's like, I would always fucking like think, how am I going to do this angle? How am I, like, how am, and it's like, if someone's already doing it, you don't have to rip it word for word. But it's like, that is a proven model that like a, a fucking, an absolute weapon is tested. So, yeah. you know, with all these spy tools, it's stupid not to at least as a control to, you know, to kind of copy them. So I'm curious if someone has an info product right now and they're listening, how would you go about, I guess, looking at these campaigns specifically? I, I know you mentioned ad spy, but what does that process look like in terms of, you know, swiping, getting inspired and kind of starting to create or plan out a VSL, you know, for your info product? Yeah, so I would give you two examples. Go to Mind Valley, go to AdSpy, look at two campaigns. Look at Super Brain with Jim Quick. I did a really banger ass video with that one, which is about the boy with the broken brain. And I did Silva Ultramind, which had which held the number one campaign for like seven or eight months on YouTube longer than 10 minutes long, which was an honor. And look at how we sell the course. If you look at Silva, 
it's a, it's an amazing thing that happens at the beginning. And then it's the story on how it was discovered. Some amazing shit was discovered, right? They tested on a bunch of people. It transformed. They made a course. It blew up. The founder died. So we took over. It made it even better. And now you can buy it today, right? That is the flow of this thing. So what I want you to do is look at the flows of these top campaigns. Break them down. Print them out. Write down the script. Get it transcribed. What my old mentor, John Benson, taught me was to chunk these things into chunks. So I just, every paragraph is like a scene, like a scene out of a movie. What is this? The, the amazing lead opener. Like, oh, he's talking about the root cause of the problem. It's a little confusing when you do your first one, but as you do more, you start to see patterns. And then you just run out of things. There's just You just start to see there's only so many puzzle pieces when you're trying to sell something at the end of the day. So once you find, once you understand all the pieces of the puzzle, then all of your VSL is just puzzle pieces in different orders. Like what is the conspiracy? What is the root cause of the problem? What is the mechanism? What is the techniques? Things like that. Totally, totally. And in terms of like the, the actual kind of funnel structure, obviously, you know, we want to swipe competitors, but I know that Mind Valley had some like amazing breakthroughs when we started doing, you know, on Facebook VSLs um, or even, you know, in YouTube feed VSLs. So I'm curious, maybe speak about, you know, the, the old way of doing it where it's like opt-in, two-step, 90-minute webinar with a, you know, four-step funnel, which is, you know, has a lot of friction versus now we're almost bringing that, you know, the entire kind of webinar VSL straight to Facebook. So tell me kind of how you discovered that, the results of, of, of this change and the impact it had. Yeah. So I, you know what? I used to hate on webinars. I'm not going to hate. I don't hate on webinars anymore. They have a place that the only place that you can really interact with people live if people actually mm -hmm. do that. I know most webinars are actually just VSLs, like pre recorded VSLs at the end of the day behind the thing. A lot of the biggest biz op guys do webinars. And based on my research, most of the biggest high ticket people. So if you're selling a $2,500 product that is five payments at $2,500, it looks to me like webinars still dominate that space you know, more than VSLs kind of do. But for the rest of the industry, it's VSLs all day long. That's the only space that webinars are still doing better than VSLs. And I will admit that. But the rest of the people do VSLs. And it's just this idea that like somebody's scrolling on Facebook, they're, taught, they're bored, they're looking for a dopamine rush, and they see a video and they're watching it. They're really interested in it. And they're hooked by it. And they just really want to see what happens, right? And then they're not doing anything. They're just still watching the video. And then they're sold and they fucking, oh, yeah, I'm going to buy it. And they click and they buy it, right? Like that is the least um, friction thing in the world when it comes to, you know, selling something. It's just the more clicks you have someone to do, the more people are going to drop off. And so when you think about a funnel, you want to suck as many people in the top of this funnel, right? Any clicks, anything, it's just that you just, I don't know. That's why the video as the ad has been my secret sauce forever. And, you know, the videos that are between, two minutes to six minutes long crush minutes that are 11 minutes long crush. And some of the mind Valley videos are like over 40 minutes long, just running as an ad. And there's a lot of people doing literally hour long documentaries for your ad, which is crazy, which is, I had to get, I got to mind Valley and I was like, listen guys, they're like, what's the plan? I'm like, we're going to make 40 minute ads. Okay. Where are we going to put them? We're going to make them at the ad. What, why would you do that? Cause it works. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. <laughs> Right. I'm like, it's like the hardest part is just trying to like, like just not look retarded by, but like, yeah, that's the plan. We're going to do long videos. Yeah. Okay. And then next minute, it's like number one, number two, number four VSL in, in the world, you know, is a long form from Mind Valley. So crazy. Um, yeah. Obviously working. Now, I want to kind of go into some more, you know, tactical stuff if we can. If someone has a, you know, an info product or a course and they do the research, they maybe swipe similar campaigns in their niche. Tell us about, you know, the production process and, and the actual kind of testing process, right? If I've swiped and, and I've transcribed, you know, the the top three VSLs in, in my niche, it's like in terms of actu actually, you know, going out to action it, getting these VSLs shipped and live and tested and, and then scaling, what is the next step? I've done the research. I understand, you know, what's winning. I maybe swipe some things. How do you go into, you know, production mode to actually start shipping these? Yeah, so you got to think of it like getting an MVP out, like the, from that book, The Lean Startup. If anyone hasn't read that, it's basically like most biggest mistakes entrepreneurs make is they try to make it perfect the first time. So they take months to make something that's perfect and then it flops and they're devastated, right? Nobody wants to buy it and they're devastated. That's what you don't want to do. What you want to do is an MVP. What's the least amount that I can do to see if anyone wants to buy this, 
right? And like offer testing is really, 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 really important. Probably even more important than the VSL, you know, the day, testing different offers. So you don't want to go balls deep on one offer to see if this one works. You want to like go balls deep on maybe five different offers and then do multiple VSLs in each one to kind of like, just like see, like test it out, but don't be so committed to like, this is the offer that's going to explode, right? You just have to start digging down this rabbit hole and then digging down other rabbit holes. I, one of my students that hired me recently, they're doing 10 offers a week. Damn. 50 people. Affiliates? They test drop shippers. They test 10 different products a week. They, all they do is avatorals and they wanted to take their winning ones. I'm like, that is insane. That is like the best thing because they're finding offers that nobody would even think about because no one's digging like that. No one digs like that crazily. But they literally just go on TikTok and find the top trending t videos on TikTok and just like swipe everything. They're just swiping everything that's running, right? And then testing it themselves and seeing what takes off. Wow, that's huge. So if people have, you know, let's say they, they test different offers with, with different VSLs, one works and, and they're happy with it. You mentioned kind of having a, an MVP VSL. Maybe can you speak around, you know, having different variations, maybe kind of testing different leads. I know you guys do that a lot at Mind Valley, just testing a ton of VSLs for different offers. So like, I guess if someone's at home, have a, a proven offer that they've tested, maybe it's an info product or a membership or, or, or a coaching program. What is the next step after that kind of MVP VSL to, you know, just absolutely scale, go nuclear and crush it? Yeah, so you're just looking for a positive ROI right now. That's what you're looking for. If you're beginning and you're just starting out, the easiest way to do that is VSL.ai for sure. You just hit some buttons and then it rewrites all the best VSLs for you and like a couple push of the buttons. And that is so easy for you to get your foot out the door, get the ball out going. It does. It's not like 100% click and launch. It's like 95% there and then you just tweak it up and make it how you would want to make it and then you're ready to go. So that's a really easy way to get your foot in the door, test a product, test something out and see if it kind of works, right? Then you're making moves to optimize your campaign. Now, you just want to, I mean, there's a lot of different pieces, right? Because you're just like, you're trying to figure out what is the best move you could possibly make when it comes to boosting the ROI, right? Because you could have things where maybe the ROI is pretty good, but your AOV is low and you got to work on your upsells. Right. Maybe you got to work on the new, the close in your VSL and fix the ending of your VSL. Right. Maybe you got to get a spokesperson to make moves like that to see if you can bump the R ROI doing that. Maybe you got to do a little bit more better B roll and do a little bit more professional shoot or not professional shoot, just, but at least get some actors or whatever and film on your phone and get some better personalized B roll that the market hasn't seen before. Cause a lot of the B roll you get from stock footage they've seen already all the time. So it's kind of a giveaway a lot of the time. So. Even if you just have ugly footage just on your, in the whatever, it's new, it's different, it's interesting, it's cool. And uh, that is the beginning. You're looking for that product that starts to go, but you're just endlessly making videos, right? It's not your first, here's, the, here's what you have to do. You have to make 40. It's not your first video, it's your 40th video. You just keep digging down the hole the, I, my win rate is super low, right? Literally, I have like a 15% win rate when it comes to making BSLs. Just like the vast majority of them will just bomb. Like nine out of 10 bomb all the time. Eight out of 10 bomb. But the thing about winning a VSL is now you're killing it, right? You're crushing it now. So, and when you crush on a VSL, you can crush real hard, right? Yeah. It's it's crazy. For sure. For when sure. you crack it. Yeah, mate. Maybe can you go into some specifics on campaigns where you just tested like a, you know, a shit ton, most of them didn't work, and then you had that one winner, how, how you refined your learnings from the losers into finding that winner and, and just scaling you know, and going nuclear? Yeah. I mean, I'll give you a few examples. Like when I was at Mind Valley, I never thought Silva would be huge, right? It took me a while to think about, oh, we should just promote your top products and then see if I make VSLs for that. I was just making VSLs for all the niches that I thought were really interesting. And I just was, I was, I just thought about it like firing seven cannons at a time. I would just make a VSL, assume it didn't work, make another VSL, assume it didn't work, make another one. And I would try to set up seven cannons and just fire them all at the same time to see if anything hits. Typically one of them out of seven would like see some good traction and would be able to move. And I just kind of do it like that. Before I got to my skincare brand, we were an affiliate. Um, and we were just testing things over and over again. But one of the lessons that I learned is that it's not about the product that you're selling. It's about the problem that you're solving. 
being able to understand whether a product, because every product solves a problem, right? And some problem niches are humongous, humongous. So if anything even remotely helps with this product, like let's take back pain, humongous niche, completely de debilitating, ruined your life. You can't think, you can't sleep. You're fucked with back pain. You're down to try anything, right? And there's lots of different things that'll try back pain. So if you're in a niche that has anything to do with back pain, there's a good chance that can work. Whether it's a foot insole, a pain relief patch, a knee compression sock, right? All of these things, a thing that hangs you upside down, gym equipment helps with back pain, right? It's just all these things help in their own different ways, pills, whatever. Uh, all these things help in different ways. And you just have to be able to start understanding the problems that the vast the world has. And then you're able to see, does this thing fit? So for example, we knew that sleep was a huge niche. Like can't sleep. If you can't sleep, your life's fucked. I'll go through a list of niches real quick. Bigger dick. If anything that helps someone get a bigger dick, get more muscles, lose weight, right? Look younger, make more money, fall asleep fast, pain relief. Those are just a hand, hair loss, right? These are some big ones that just huge niches that will never go away and never die and always be around, right? Any product that kind of dives into this niche, any one of these, like the sleep niche, for example, has a potential to be huge, right? So mattresses has a potential to be huge, very important, sleep related, bed sheets, huge. We stumbled upon a pillow offer one time and we're like, pillows, that helps somebody fall asleep fast. We tested that one. We cracked a VSL, for a million dollars worth of pillow sold in four days because the thing just exploded. Thing went absolutely nuclear, right? Later on, we're like, oh my God, I guess everyone in the world has like seven pillows at their house or like 10 pillows. Like how many mm -hmm. pillows do you, do you have? Just a lot. Well, you don't yeah, even think lot. about it, yeah. right? You just happen <laughs> yeah, to have yeah, a yeah. fuckload of pillows somehow, <laughs> yeah. right? Everybody yeah. happens to have a fuckload of pillows. So, That's so true, yeah. And it's like, this yeah. is weird. Like these are products mm -hmm. that everybody has, like interesting mm -hmm. how these things kind of go big. You, As you mature, you start to just see more stuff. And this is why you want to live on the spy tools. Like you want to eat spy tools for, for breakfast, right? Because you just want to see winning campaigns and just notice the niches. Notice the niches and start seeing repetitive niches. Oh, this is fitness. This is weight loss. This is type 2 diabetes, right? This is gut health. You start to see these niches that like just keep appearing over and over again. And then it starts to make sense that people get fucking problems when they get past 50, right? When they get older, people have problems. People aren't eating correctly. Their life is fucked. They're, they're not moving. Lots of shit happens to somebody when they don't move and don't use their body and don't eat correctly. Lots of things, right? So important niches to kind of think about. Gadgets are a big niche, but gadgets are kind of tough. That really I've discovered is kind of like a random fucking thing. There's a lot of random stuff like flashlights, heaters, portable AC units, like food storage shit. Like there's so many random things that are just really hard to predict when it's, uh, gadget successes. But yeah, people love a good that's gadget. Right. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I'm curious with the alpha, the silver method, yeah, um, which is like a, a mind valley course. What was the main problem that, that you were solving there? Brain is another huge niche. Brain was actually my first niche that exploded for me. Supplements, nootropic supplements. So anything brain related, huge, right? Anything brain related. So that is more about how we have untapped human potential inside of us. And because of this fast paced society, fast paced world, we are not able to reach these deeper level of minds that science has proven can do weird, freaky, psychic shit if you do it, right? <laughs> Which is what this is about. This guy discovered some psychic shit that his daughter was able to do because he was doing some meditation techniques on her. And he tested it on tons of people and it was very huge and very successful. And so that, that is like a brain offer, right? Same thing with super brain, also a brain offer, right? About healing the brain. Two of the big, two of the big campaigns over there. Those were big. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And one thing which, which I think, especially in the program and even, you know, listening to a lot of your stuff and being on calls, like you said, is that, you know, 40 number where it's like, what you know, 40 VSLs to test, even if 39 fails at 40th one, if it crushes, you know, the, all the failures are going to be worth it. So like if, I, I guess, is, is there any tips because you've been through the ringer so much, if someone has a course and they want to sell it, kind of how to get through the constant shit eating of testing and failing and, and like shipping more until you find success. Cause it is hard. You know, if 
there's been VSLs where I put like a lot of time, probably wasn't MVP enough and it didn't work. I'm sure, I'm sure other people the same as like, fuck, you know, if that didn't work, how, how do I do it again? So like maybe you could speak a little bit on the mindset and the shipping, uh, you know, the frame. Yeah, I'll do angles really quick. So I'll tell a quick story on angles from a student that we have named Leo, mm -hmm. uh, Leo Levy. This guy came into our program. He was doing $68,000 a month and he was like breaking even and stressed out and not doing very well, right? Even mm -hmm. though it's a lot of money, it's just like the campaign's just breaking even, whatever. He's selling mm -hmm. this product. Uh, I'm not going to say what the product is, um, but it's like phone related. It's a phone related product. And he's selling this thing and he's doing all these like fear angles. Like this is hurting this, this is hurting that. Mm -hmm. This is all the problems. He's doing all these like problem-based angles, which is typically what the... Basic, anyone who signs up and reads a copywriting book is, all right, you got to agitate the problem, right? All mm -hmm. this stuff. Like, it's kind of just the basic thing that somebody would yeah. do, but they think that it's really good, right? Because they're like, this is level one, right? So what these guys did is they went like a level deeper. I call this like, I used to call this inception marketing back when I was doing more of this inception type stuff. But they instead of the, thinking about the problem and leading with the problem that this product was solving, they asked something like, who is hurt who is like not making money from this like who what who is getting hurt by this problem or like what is there any conspiracy evolves or around this problem or whatever is there something else going on that caused that like that is like what happened that caused this problem to show up in the first place that like phones or whatever like doing to people and they were doing a bunch of research and they found that like um the phone companies were supposed to update the phones um, they were supposed to update the phones because there was some weird like leakage stuff that could like hurt you or whatever that's coming out of your phone, like this phone stuff. And they didn't want to update the phones because it costs too much money. So that's why people created this device to help block the stuff on the phone. You know, like these like, why you know, like when they say like Wi-Fi fucks with you, you know, they, like people talk about that. Right. So they found a conspiracy of like, instead of going after like Wi-Fi fucks with you, like the Wi-Fi router companies didn't want to upgrade their Wi-Fi routers because it cost too much money. So now there's just like bullshit leaking out of it that's causing all problems in everybody. So they found this other angle that that created the problem or like is caused by the problem. It's kind of like a conspiracy angle. And that's what caused their campaign to blow up. Next thing I know, literally the next month that they cracked this VSL, they did 400 grand in revenue. And then the next month, they did $856,000 in sales just on month three inside of the program, right? Just struggle, struggle, struggle. You change the angle, right? You find that next big angle that's kind of deeper. There's this deeper level, like it's this conspiracy. It's like what, there's this, I'm trying to think of the question that you would have to ask to find these things. It's just, you have to find the conspiracy that created the problem in the first place. Mm, like someone yeah, who's at this, fault or somebody. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's, there's that Agora quote where it's like, you know, allay fears, throw rocks at enemies, kind of, uh, you know, I think it's like justify failures. I'll, I'll get it up and, and post it, but all, all the old school Agori copywriters have these kind of five rules and it's how they, a lot of times they can find angles where like, this is like throwing rocks at enemies where it's like, you know, the, either like the American government's like, you know, hurting taxpayers and, and this loophole, you know, gets you out of it or the, or the Wi-Fi example. Um, but yeah, that's an amazing example. It's I, an I guess uh, the, yeah. uh, it's an angle thing, totally. It's an angle thing. Yeah. Do you have any other examples of like, campaigns that either you or, or some of your students have launched where you know you tested a ton of different angles maybe some of the angles you test that didn't work and then and then the ones that did well you know what's important is uh i want to talk about this campaign that we ran with our collagen supplement when i was doing my skincare brand so when i first started out i thought that nightmare stories were the keys to the kingdom i was like nobody can look away from a car crash i was doing nightmare stories i was just new i started having success i was just Nightmare story after nightmare story, just looking for a nightmare story to lead the thing off, right? And eventually, like, I was just going so far down the rabbit hole. It was like, how many people could I kill in the first five sentences? In the first sentences to like, what's the most nightmare? Like, yeah, I was just yeah, trying yeah. to level up myself every single yeah. time or whatever. Then I went on this trip and I met this girl who started this, uh, this company called Fuck Cancer. And she was telling me about raising money because she, she raises money for charities. And with charities there's a really interesting lesson that a lot of them have learned when it comes to raising money, which is like the people who go around and are trying to raise money for like starving kids in Africa and they show pictures of starving kids and they put them in front of your face and like, look at these kids, you asshole, like you need to fucking pay us money so we can help them. And then you get guilt tripped into like paying them, right? 
because it, you're like, whatever. But the next time you see this guy, you don't want to talk to him. You want to run away because you remember that this guy fucking is going to show you pictures of yeah. starving kids or whatnot. Totally. Right? Totally. Yeah. Like people, an association with them. It's the association. People yeah. just remember how you made them feel. So she was telling me that, you know, because I was telling her about these stories. She's like, dude, these nightmare stories are not good. These negative advertising things are not good. Because people don't remember how for brands, no, no bueno, right? Because I had done this, I had gone down, we had this campaign that wasn't working. We just tried to do a harder nightmare story. And a harder nightmare story, we had about a little leeway because this was about a dream that our uh, dermatologist had. So we were talking about what happened in the dream. So we had just had unlimited creative unlimited, yeah, damn, flexibility man, was, to like, yeah, shit. Something that like woke her out of damn, bed. Right? I'm jealous. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like those kind of angles, like a little creative stuff. So we were just all sorts of stuff we we're testing. And then we went down this really douchey rabbit hole where like we were frustrated because nothing was working. Like, all right, what's the worst thing that could happen? A guy, her husband wants to leave for another girl. So we like did this scene where the husband leaves and he's like, yeah, I want to leave for a younger woman. I feel like I'm coming home to my mother and stuff like that. And the market just fucking ripped us apart because it was just horrific. And we ended up pausing the thing. So I told her this story. She tells me this story about, you know, just, People just remember how you make them feel. And she starts to tell me that, you know, the knife thing, because you hear in copywriting, stab them with a knife and twist the yeah, knife. Yeah, twist it. Yeah. Stab them yeah. with a twist. It. Bro, mm -hmm. if you stab anyone, they don't want to, they don't want to fucking see you again. Right. That's the first thing you got to think about. Right. We deal, we're talking about like, I was doing like women over 40. I need to move and dance with them and like give them a good time and like talk about the problem, but not stab them with a knife. Right. We can't be stabbing people with knives and expect them to rebuy again. The money is in the re is in the re is in the relationship. It's in them wanting to come back. So I had to switch. So I began switching from focusing on pain, stabbing them with the knife, nightmares, to opposite, best case scenario, right? Dream situation, those kind of things, and start to have more positive associations um, and lead with sell with positivity more. Like thirty percent problem, seventy percent solution, seventy percent amazing kind of situations. And that started to be a big pivot. So we ended up finding a, a new lead that was talking about this tribe called the Hunza tribe out in fucking Africa or whatever, who just didn't seem to age after 40. They had all these older women who just looked really young and they had this amazing secret. But coincidentally, our dermatologist also has an amazing secret and this is what hers is. So like there wasn't even a connection there with the lead. It was like, these people have a secret and so do we, right? And that was incredible. Like, and that worked really well. So- Nice. And that was positive brand building stuff. So ever since then, and if you look at the Helen Hansel lead, there's this, sorry, if you look at the Hill, so Jose Silva lead, it leads with Helen Hansel. So I started really going hard with like, what's the most amazing testimonial ever from this product, right? The most amazing thing that's ever happened because of this product existed. And I found the Helen Hansel story, which is this woman who was able to win any competition she could take part of. We put that right at the beginning and that just crushed it. The first two words was Helen Hansel was able to win any competition she took part in, right? And I think I know every word of that because it's it's just every every YouTube video is just absolutely pumping still. Oh, it's pumping. Yeah. It's insane, Helen man. So Helen we, got, Hansel, we, got a, yeah. we got we got a text from somebody later. You know, there's like the picture of the girl, Helen Hansel. Mm -hmm. We got a text from somebody early, like later on that like, that's not even the right girl. Like that's some other Helen Hansel. So we accidentally like blew up the wrong girl. <laughs> the wrong person. Yeah, we got that's the old the, lady that, down. We, that's we got incredible, her correct, yeah. But, her younger yeah. self, I I don't know who that is, right? Someone's getting blasted. It looks real. Anyway, um, nice, man. Well, I'd love to kind of switch things up a bit because I think one thing that you really, really helped me with like inside the program, which I was never really into, I don't know, you know what you want to call it, whether it's like mindset, manifesting, law of attraction, stuff like that. But, you know, yourself, the way you spoke about it, you said it changed your life. There's people in the program where exactly the same thing just through like you know setting goals like envisioning them you know got to the top of clickbank and are absolutely killing it so i know that there's no coincidences so i'd love quickly for you to touch on you know it's a big topic probably you know it's a it's a whole separate podcast in itself but the idea of you know the mindset it takes to, to be successful because you are going to eat a lot of shit a lot of your campaigns are going to fail your ad accounts are going to get blocked you're going to deal with a lot of kind of like fuckery on, on the journey so, you know, obviously, you know, you've been through it. Everyone is still going through it. Tell us a little bit about some of those kind of like hacks or kind of mindset, you know, routines and patterns that really, really change the game for you. Yeah. So uh, most of my cool things that have happened to me have happened just based on luck. 
mostly preparation meets luck, you know, but really based on luck. And I'll be straight to the point. Luck is a boomerang. Luck is not a random thing that hits you or hits somebody. Luck is a boomerang. Florence Shin has this quote called life is a game of boomerangs, right? So the law of attraction means whatever you put out, you get back. That's a boomerang, right? Whatever emotion you throw out to the universe is what you're going to receive at the end of the day. Just to be straight to the point. I have been through hell and high water to figure this out, right? To discover this. Because this is a really weird thing that most people who listen to this don't have high belief in and don't think that it's very possible. And they're going to call bullshit and they're going to throw it away. But let me tell you what, this is really the key at the end of the day. Because when I started, let me, I'm just trying to tell you what fucking works. So listen, whoever's listening to this, listen to what fucking works. Listen to me. When I started, I thought I needed to know all about marketing and business and sales and copywriting and stuff. I read all those books. And then I just hit a glass ceiling where I hit this window I couldn't pass. And then I learned that problem was about your subconscious mind and your identity. So I read a bunch of books on the subconscious mind and identity, and I learned to level up my identity so I could break through my glass ceiling and move on to the next level. And then random fucking bad shit would happen to me, and it would fuck it up at the last day. The wheel on the bus would just fall off the bus. Something would happen. The road would break in front of me, whatever, right? Like the guy who was driving the bus would kill himself or something like that. And then like, I'm just like, what the hell? Like random shit's happening. That like just ruins my day or ruins the situation. I realized there was a third piece I didn't understand, which is something about this universe is fucking with me, is going on, right? It was interesting because I had a moment where I had lost everything. I was down to $20, a suitcase full of clothes, a laptop, and a moped. On that day, my moped got stolen. I was just really far down, but, and I would, I lost 20 pounds because I couldn't eat any, I didn't have any more food. I ran out of food. I was just losing weight because I was just not eating. But I would find like $40 on the ground somehow, right? I would get this random tax return when I thought it was done for, right? So there was weird signs that even though I was getting fucked, the universe was keeping me alive. It was weird. Like I was dying, but it d- didn't want to kill me. It was just, it w- I could see it. I was like, I see you fucking helping me at the bottom. Why don't you help me get to the top? Why are you helping me from dying? Why don't you just help me be successful <laughs> instead of keeping me from dying? So- there's like these weird things going on, right? So at the bottom, I got into spirituality and found a book called Conversation with God that literally just talks about maybe you control your reality a lot more than you think you are, right? Maybe you're doing something and you control your reality a lot more than you think you are. And maybe the thoughts you're putting out in the visions in your imagination and the words that you're saying yourself are all boomerangs that you're throwing out to the universe that is casting back to you that ex- same experience. This was huge shit, right? So today, I'm all fucking about this. Because at the end of the day, what works the best is when lucky shit happens to you, right? When luck, when random things come to you, when you meet the perfect person, when you just, you have, your neighbor happens to be the exact guy you need, right? When just something just goes down and you just crack something, like you're just praying for something and it appears, right? Like the whole God thing and the whole universe thing is the most powerful thing in getting you to where you want to be. It is. Hands down, right? You got to be prepared. You got to work fucking miracles with your hands. But this whole like manifestation thing is like the thing. So I'm constantly casting out boomerangs in terms of like gratitude. This is why people tell you to be grateful, right? People talk about your emotions. This is why your emotions are important because they're not just your emotions. They're boomerangs out to the universe and things are going to come back and feel it. So when people say talk about your feelings or it's all about the feelings, that sounds super gay. But the feelings are the boomerangs at the end of the day. So I just want to just be one of those people who just let you know. Usually it takes a lot of time for like belief to build, right? But check out Think and Grow Rich, right? Belief, faith, check out the sick, the antenna, the sixth sense. Don't say this shit isn't, we don't have this stuff. Like the gangster people are talking about this fucking shit. If you open your eyes and start looking at this stuff and you start reading books and getting down this rabbit hole, like gangster people talk about God. Gangster people talk about how they get downloads. You know, some of the most successful athletes in the world either had a huge belief in God or a huge belief that they were the best in the world. It was one of the two things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's even like uh, off topic, but you know, the whole kind of like psychedelic angle as well. I know there's like a lot of billionaires and successful people doing some weird jungle ayahuasca stuff and speaking to different powers and it's giving them 
ideas. So yeah, another rabbit hole to go down, but I think it's super important. As we work towards wrapping up, man, this has been amazing. Is there anything like any other topics or any other advice you want to speak about that we haven't covered? Uh, I think the advice of the day is don't miss your goals, right? That I think that's the advice of the day. That's what I'm learning from some of my students is that they just hadn't thought about an exit plan. They haven't thought about like what their best case scenario was or how much money they would actually make in the best case situation at the end of 10 years from now, at the end of five years from now, right? They haven't thought of that. They haven't put effort in that. And I'm seeing some people get to 10 years from now and not have achieved their goals and feeling burnt out and stressed. And the mistake they made, regardless of how hard they worked, was that they didn't set the vision up correctly. And they didn't put that vision behind them on a fucking wall so they could see it every single day, right? To keep them on track and keep them focused. That shit is super, that's critically important, you know, at the end of the day. Doesn't matter how much you study or learn right now. I guarantee you three years from now, you're going to forget a fuck ton of it and you're just going to be off, right? I set my shit up so I could see it all around me all the time. That's why there's vision boards all around me. That's why I tattooed my forearms. I got shit on my forearms. So I just never, I just constantly in front of me. I can't dodge the destiny the end of the day, which was my weakness. I would fall off the wagon eventually. Totally, totally. Well, man, I, I really, really appreciate you coming on. This was like insane. So many value bombs and deep stuff. I need to go outside and think about deeply now because it was awesome. In terms of you know people being able to find you, being, being able to work with you, launching your programs, where can people find you? Where's the best place to reach out? Yeah, so uh, peterkell.com is the best place to find me or actually to find me, go to Instagram and just type Peter Kell, K-E-L-L. And uh, for the best offer, if you want to get into this, um, the VSL.ai yearly subscription has all my shit, the VSL Masterclass, Rampage Money, which is about affiliate marketing and AI, and then the Six Figure Fast Lane, which is like how to get the six figures as fast as possible without needing money or any experience using this tool and how to get like good gigs and jobs and stuff like that. That's like you're in. That's better than fucking college. All that shit combined. So get in that way. That's the best place to start. And uh, yeah, that's it. We got a YouTube channel. We're putting a podcast all the time there. So Peter Kell, search it. Lots of cool content coming out. I got people, I got, I'm waking up at 2.30 right now and I got a camera guy coming at 4 a.m. and we film some gangster stuff. So a lot of that's going to be released soon. So check it out. It's going to be great. Nice, man. Well, yeah, check out the YouTube, check out VSL AI. There's some amazing stuff on your, on your YouTube channel where you go super deep, man. So I really, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, th this was awesome. Uh, you know, I'll tick it off the dream list. And yeah, I, I really, really appreciate it, man. Appreciate everything you're, you're doing for the community inside VSL Masterclass as well. And thanks for coming on, man. This was awesome. Thank you so much, Lucas. This was great. Cool. Thanks, man.